Good evening. Hallelujah. Uh, sun's not shining tonight like it was last week and the week before, but we're having a great day in Jesus, and uh, we're having a great time in the Lord, and uh, we want to share with you tonight the gospel. I'll be tonight in Second Thessalonians, first that Second Thessalonians chapter one again, and uh, I'll be sharing from verse number eight tonight, and uh, I'm just going to wait just just a few moments before we get before we get started here. It's been a great day to serve the Lord, a great day to know Jesus, and. Uh, this could have been a great day for the Lord to return and come and receive us unto Himself. Amen. This could have been this could have been the day that the Lord returned to the earth or to the clouds to receive the church in the air to receive us unto Himself. Amen. Looks like several coming on, and we appreciate everybody that's coming on. And uh we're just thanking the Lord for the opportunity to even share the gospel. And uh, yeah, there's several that's that's coming on now. Amen. That's good. Right here. This one. I'm trying to get my lighting just right so that my glasses don't show a big glare. Must be the other one. That's good right there. Just, you're fine. Just that one there must be the one. Well, I can't get the glare off my glasses. I'll just take my glasses off. That's fine right there. Don't, don't worry about it. Okay, we're going to get started here. And uh, I tell you, I love, I love, I love the Bible, don't you? And the child of God, we should love the Word as we read the Word, we hear the Word, and we listen to the Word. You can put that back up. There you go. That that'd be fine. Okay, we're about we're about to get set here, and uh, once we get the lighting just right, we'll be we'll be rolling on. Good to have everybody tonight that's tuning in, and uh, I want I want to share. And last week I shared with you about a little bit about the Antichrist, how that the Antichrist will be doing his thing, and. Uh, we know that it, it's the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, that's keeping him in check and <clears throat> keeping him in bay in the day and the hour in which you live and I live. And uh, the child of God is waiting and watching for the return of Jesus Christ to receive us unto himself. Amen. Verse number 8 <clears throat> tells us, and in, in again, Second Thessalonians chapter number 1, Verse number eight says, In a flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is right after verse seven when he said to you that are troubled, he said, Rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from the heavens with his mighty angels. And he's coming back. When he comes back, he's coming back in a, in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on, on all them that know not God, those who do not have that relationship with God, that everyday relationship, that relationship that says, when I wake up in the morning, I praise the Lord. When I lay down at night, I praise the Lord. And all through my day, uh, I give myself. And there, there's that one gospel song that says, I give myself away. And when I think about the church and the day in which we live in, and again, I'm going to go back to the scripture where the Bible tells us it is not God's will for any man to perish. It's not God's will for any man to perish. I, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. I, I really don't care. God, in everything that God has ever done and everything God has established, he has not desired, and still in no way does God desire that men would be separated from him in the end. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's God's will that all be saved. And there was enough blood shed on the cross of Calvary to wash away every sin. And there's not one sin common to man except 
the sin of blasphemy in the Holy Ghost. That one is one that will never be forgiven. But sin that men commit, transgressions that they commit, there's not a one that God will not forgive a man. If a man or a woman be to that place that they will repent and call upon the name of the Lord. Now, before Jesus comes to receive the church and uh, then after the church and, and during after a period of time, the Lord's coming back. And when he comes back with his angels, he's coming back to judge the world. And that's what verse number eight is telling us that he's coming back and he's going to take vengeance on all those who know not God and know not and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the ones that's going to be, they're going to be in trouble. I'll just tell you that they will be in trouble. Now, as the church and as believers, uh, our responsibility from now till we hear the trumpet sound, from now when the rapture takes place, our responsibility as a child of God is that we preach and share the gospel of Jesus. What is the gospel of Jesus? The gospel of Jesus says that God loves everybody and because God loves everybody. The Son of God loves everybody. Amen. And the Bible particularly tells us that God, God is love. So therefore, you and I, as a child of God, as a believer in the gospel, as a man or a woman that obeys the gospel, it is our responsibility, it is our call, and God has called us and give us the great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all humanity. To all mankind, the gospel must be preached. And when we preach the gospel, we'll preach love. We'll share love. We will exhibit love. Amen. And we're to love, we're to love mankind. That's what that's what the word tells us. I was thinking today about loving your neighbor as yourself. And I've told you several times, I've got wonderful neighbors. Uh, one to my left is a, is a pastor, and another minister lives across the street on, on another corner, and he's a minister of the gospel. I, I've been very fortunate that God has placed us right in the midst of two, two other ministers. Now, they are my neighbors, and I, I was sitting there in my chair, and I, I was debating who my neighbor really is. And it was just like God just kind of opened up my thinking. It's not necessarily the two people that live to my right or live to my left, but my neighbors are all those that I come in contact with. Those are those men and women of the world. And, and you, you can take that any way you want to. You, you can take that to mean literally that it's the one on the right, the one on the left, or the one across the street, or the one behind you. You, you, you just take it where you want to believe it, but my neighbor, my neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. We, we talk about the Good Samaritan, uh, the acts and the deeds of, of the Good Samaritan. Uh, we, we could talk about that, but our responsibility from the great commandment is to share the gospel, the love of God, that we love one another, that we love the soul of man, that we love that man and that woman today who has not repented. For God so loved the world. And you know the scripture tells us he loved us while we were yet. And I'm thankful that God loved me while I was yet out in sin, amen. If it had not been for that, I, I may not be here, I may not be here tonight. But rest assured, our job, our responsibility, our calling, our commission is to preach the gospel and to occupy till Jesus comes again. And trust me, he is coming back to receive the church unto himself. If you believe one word of the Bible, you've got to believe it all. And the Bible says Jesus is coming to receive us 
unto himself. That, that's his words. That's his words, the word of Christ. Now, when we talk about judgment, and, and I don't know about you, but the, if, if you really think about those that will be left behind, if you think about those who do not uh, do not know God, those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus, those are the ones that will be judged, and they will be judged by him. I shared that last week. It'll be Jesus who will be the judge. Now, those are the ones who really know not God. I preach Sunday, there is a living God. And they do not know the living God, the one true God. And those who do not know him, they will be left and they will be judged. Those are those who sin and they're open in their sin. Uh, matter of fact, there's some who even boast of their sin. They are those who sin against the revelation of the word of God. God has given us revelation through his word, how we should live, how we should act, how we should talk as a believer, as men and women that have been changed. Uh, they are those who look at creation and when they see the creation that God has created, they fail to see God or to live by the laws that are clearly seen in our nature and in our creation. When we see nature, we see God. When we see creation, we see God. Now, what I can tell you tonight, that man can know God, and he can know God within himself. He can know God in his own thoughts, his own reasonings, and he can even know God in his own conscience. But let me tell you something. Men, they, they can know God outside of themselves. They can know God. They can know creation, and they can know nature, and they, they can know the earth, and they can know the outer space. But notice what the word said, nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Amen. Romans 1 and 10, 20 says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Amen. You can look out and see the things that God has created. You can see the beauty of the earth and the beauty of the world in which God has given unto us to live in, to dwell in. Even the word said, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. This is what the word says. Psalms 97 and 6 says, And the heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people are his glory. It didn't say a half people or a, a fourth of people or a, a this people, but the people see his glory. All the people see his glory. Amen. What, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm telling you something. Men can know that God gives us life. And we know that. And, 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 and I, I know what others think, that life came from somewhere else and, and, and we evolved or we came from a great explosion. But honestly, we know if we believe in God and we trust in God, then we know where we come from. And, and we know that God gives us life and that he cares and, and he provides for us. And, and there's a lot of sinners today. They know that. They understand that. And, and God gives us purpose and meaning for life. And he gives it in an orderly and a lawful way, praise God. When men look at the nature and they see that God's great, God is great and God is good. Therefore, God 
deserves to be glorified and even given thanks for all that God has done. But instead of seeing God and coming to know God, we live in a world, my friend, that's rejected him. They've rejected God instead of worshiping God. Amen. Now, some worship, and, and we're told not to do this, we're not to, we're not to worship the creation that God has created. We're not, we're not to worship the earth and things of the earth. And somebody said, well, what would that be? It could be the things of science, and, and it could be things of, of man, uh, humanistic worship. Some even worship God of their imagination, a thought or an image of what God is, uh, a God that allows them, that they think this, that they imagine a God that will allow them to live as they desire. But I can tell you it's exactly the opposite. It's exactly the opposite of that. God has not created us that we can live as we desire to live. And see, that's what's happened to a lot of people. Their desires are other than God. Their desires are to uh, worship everything but God. They may know God and know that God is there, but to have that personal relationship is, is far, far gone. These are the people that God's going to judge. These are the people that Jesus Christ is coming back to the earth to judge. People who do not know the living and the true God that's created everything. And again, by him was all things created. And for him were all things created. Not, they don't know him in a personal day-to-day -day relationship. They just don't know God in that relationship. Aren't you know you know God? Aren't you glad that not only you know Father, but you know the Son, and you know the Holy Spirit, and you have that day-to-day -day relationship with him? Now, if we walk in the Spirit, we live in the Spirit, we dwell in the Spirit of God, we walk in the Spirit of love. And again, I can't stress love enough tonight. God help us to love, love one another. And if we lived in a world that would obey that, we wouldn't see near what we're seeing in the day in which we live in. All who obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ Verse number eight says they're going to be, they're going to be judged. Somebody said, Pastor, who are these people? I, I just told you, every person who's ever heard the gospel of Christ and, and rejected it, those, those are the people. Every person who has professed the gospel of Christ, see here, here here's a good one. They professed the gospel of Christ, but they rejected it. Every person who's professed the gospel of Christ, but they do not obey the commandments of the gospel. We're to obey. That, that's the word. People who've been baptized, but do not obey the commandment of the gospel. What are you saying, Pastor? You're saying everybody that, uh, are you saying there's some out there that might confess that they know Jesus, but yet they don't live? Yes, I'm saying that. Uh, God help us that we live every day, every day so close to the Lord that we're led by the Spirit. There's even those, my friend, who have joined churches. There are even those who hold memberships in the church, but they do not obey the commandments of the gospel. Those people... Those people will be in trouble when Jesus comes and receives the church. I really hate to tell you that there's people like that, but there are people like that. As a pastor, when I get calls on the phone, and thank God I've not, I've not got any recently, but there have been times in, in my ministry that I've had people call me and uh, how we treat other people. 
I had a call one Sunday morning, and the guy said, uh, who drives your church bus? And I didn't tell him the name, but I knew exactly who drove our church bus. He said, you might want to have a talk to him, that uh, he was rude, uh, he was reckless, and it had the name of the church on the side of the van. I thought, come on, that you got to you got to do better than that. I uh, had a call one time. Somebody asked me, said these people live down here, and called them by name. Said, do they go to your church? I said, yes, they go to my church that I pastor. And he said, well, you may want to have a talk to them. And I said, what about? He said, well, every Sunday morning when they leave and we take it that they're going to church because they're carrying their Bibles, they leave in a good manner. But when they come back, they're screaming and they're hollering at their children. And he said, I'm going to tell you right now, they don't only scream and holler at their children. They even curse their children. And I thought, come on, we've got to do better than that. We can't let that light that Christ has put in our heart be overshadowed by a deed or a subject that we do. We, we just can't do that. We've got to let our light shine in a good manner. And what is the good manner, Pastor? The good manner is that we've been with Jesus, that we've prayed every day, that we've had a relationship with him every day. And I'm going to tell you something. When you have that kind of relationship with Jesus, you're not going to curse your children. You're not going to do things that's going to bring harm to a brother or a sister or really to anybody. You're just not going to do that. God help us that we have that right relationship than when we've been with Jesus and the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells within us and we have that right relationship, then the world will see us as God wants the world to see us. He will see us as men and women of love. And uh, that that's the goal, that we live every day and our everyday experiences with with the Lord, amen. Now, judgment is sure to come. And uh, I don't care how many church books you've got your name on. And I don't care where you go to church. If you, if you don't live the gospel, uh, you've, got, you've got a real problem. The gospel was meant for men and women to live, to live the gospel, to live a life that's pleasing to the Lord. Now, there's a penalty for sin. There's a penalty for, and, and I, I've got to be careful how I say this, but there'll be people who are probably good people that will miss the rapture because they didn't really obey the commandments of the word. They knew him and they know of him, but do they really, really, really know him? That That's, that's the question. I'm telling you, the night I repented, the night I went to the altar, I made an acquaintance with Jesus. And from that night on, I, I've, I've knew him. I've lived for him and I've lived with him he lives within my heart there is a penalty for sin judgment it's not going to be a pretty picture it's not it's not going to be pretty and you know what uh there was an earlier day in my life that uh, I had a pretty heavy foot on the old throttle and uh, I swore up and down the police was out to get me. I mean, they would run. I'd see them pass me. And they would run two or three miles ahead of me in a city street. And they'd be parked on the side, and I wouldn't see them. And back then, they had the radar hung out the window. And sure enough, they'd stop me and write me a ticket. Finally, at last, it got I caught up with me, and... I had to go to court, and I went to court, and 
uh, the judge passed the penalty of my wrongs. And he sent me to, a, and some of you heard this before, but he sent me to a traffic school. And uh, when I went to that traffic school and I went back to the court and prior to going to traffic school, they, they revoked my license. The state held my license. And I walked up to the bench. My mother was there in the courtroom with me when the judge passed the penalty of my wrongs, he said, I'm re revoking your license and I'm sending you to traffic school. And the time of traffic school was after my time of work. He did not give me the privilege to drive to work nor to traffic school. And I looked up at the judge and I said, but your honor, and I called him your honor, I, I didn't, you know, back then, I didn't, I didn't really say what I wanted to say. And I said, how am I going to get to work? How am I going to get to traffic school? And I'm telling you, the next words out of his mouth, I really couldn't hardly believe. It was terrible. It was insulting. He looked at me and he said, son, you done this? You're involved in this. You're guilty. I don't care how you get there. You get there the best way you can. Yeah, I got angry. But I'll tell you what, when I look back on it now, after all these years, I probably got exactly what I deserved. Did traffic school make me a better man, a better driver? Well, that, that's the, my wife's over here laughing. That That's debatable. <laughs> I'll tell you what it did make me aware of. It made me aware of a lot of things that was happening around me that I did not know was happening. A lot of death and vehicles. That's what traffic school is all about. They show you things you don't want to see. And... Uh, yeah, there, there, there was a time it, 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 it affected me. And, and I'm not saying I'm a lawbreaker now. I'm, I'm not saying that. Uh, my foot has got a lot lighter over the years. Amen? <laughs> I learned my lesson, and I learned it the hard way. Now listen to me. I'm, I'm about to close this thing out here. There are those right now, and I had another judge when I went back to face another judge in the county I lived in. This man had compassion on me. This man had mercy on me. And he said, if you can go 30 days, and that 30 days, had let, it brought us up to Halloween night. I'll never forget it. He said, if you can go 30 days without getting another ticket, he said, I'm going to wipe your slate he said you think you can do that I looked at him I said sir your honor I give you my word in 30 days I will not have another ticket and if you will wipe my slate clean I will be most thankful and you know what I left that place really rejoicing and I made it 30 days without another ticket, and I got my driver's license back. I'm going to tell you something. There was a greater time in my life when I knelt at the altar of God and the blood of Jesus Christ was applied to my heart and my slate, my slate was wiped clean. Never to be remembered against me again. Yeah. Never to be brought up. Never to be put in my face. You see, though, enemy, he's good at trying to bring those things back. But you see, God forgave us. Mm -hmm. He had compassion on us. He loves us. And it's not his will that we perish. But it's his will 
that we ask him to forgive us of our transgressions. And I'm going to tell you, I watched over my shoulders, both shoulders I've watched. I've watched everything I've done. But I'm going to tell you something. That was man's doings. God's law is a lot greater and more important than any law that any man has ever made. God says, I forgave you at the altar. I wiped your slate clean. But it's up to you now to walk. It's up to you now to stay in touch. It's up to you now to live the way the gospel says that you're to live. You know, I've done, I've done my best as a man to live pleasing to God. Not to offend anyone, but to love, to love everybody. Amen. It's not God's will to judge, but he, he will because he's put it in the word. It's not God's will that men be separated eternally. That, that's what I meant. It's God's will that all men really could have eternal life if they would just just repent and turn from their wicked ways. Let's pray. I've got several, several prayer requests that's come in this week. I've got personally, I've got some personal unspoken requests that I'm, I'm, I'm praying about, asking God to intervene in these unspoken requests. And God knows those requests tonight. Don't you feel the Spirit of the Lord, the presence of God? There's nothing like Him. And knowing one day, one day, all this that we see around us, all this that's happening around us, my friend, it's coming to an end. It's coming quickly. Be ready. Be prepared. And there used to be signs all over the highway, prepare to meet God. And that's why we've got to live every day preparing our lives to meet him. Amen. Pray with me. Father, I thank you today. And God, for every, every ear that will hear the message, the word of God tonight. I pray, God, for every heart. Lord, let the Holy Spirit touch every heart, I pray, and make us better men and better women, God. Help us to live a life that's pleasing to you. That, God, we please you in every aspect of our lives. What we do, where we go, what we say. God, help me, Lord, to live pleasing to you and to never be an offense but God, to always show the love of God and the love of Christ to all humanity, God. Touch the prayer request that's come in this week, God, I pray. Miracles, God. Men are wanting and needing miracles. And I believe, God, while we're still on this earth, you are a miracle-working God. God, for the unspoken request tonight, you know these requests from our hearts, Lord. And you know you know what we're going to ask for before we ever ask. Thank you tonight for Jesus, your son. Thank you for shedding his blood on the cross of Calvary that my sins could be covered and my slate is wiped clean. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Father, for your spirit that I feel and I sense right now in this room. And I pray, God, across, across this media, God, men will feel and know and sense the love of God and the spirit of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost to touch their lives. And I ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great week.
Have a great week in Jesus. And I'll see you Sunday. Amen. God bless you tonight.